So I'm in the sage room here at Huron, and I chose this as my site of memory because of this portrait of John Grave Simcoe. And Simcoe was the first lieutenant governor of Upper Canada, as well as the one who introduced the Act Against Slavery, which was passed on July 9, 1793. Following the Constitutional Act of 1791 that divided Canada into the provinces of Upper and Lower Canada, Simcoe was appointed the position of Lieutenant Governor and moved to Canada from England. With the successful formation of an elective legislative assembly, Upper Canada passed the first Act Against Slavery in the British Empire on July 9, 1793. Simcoe had been a supporter of emancipation before moving to Upper Canada, and his initial draft of the Act called for an outright abolition of slavery. However, the Legislative Assembly was primarily made up of Loyalists who had brought enslaved people with them into Upper Canada following the American Revolution and did not support this act. Not wanting to lose the hope of any progress being made, Simcoe compromised. The new legislation that was passed called for a more gradual emancipation and consisted of points such as the current people enslaved will remain so until death, no new slaves were to be brought into Upper Canada, and children born to female slaves would be freed at the age of 25. While the act was not an immediate end to slavery, it was the first to limit it within the British Empire. Simcoe on the issue stated, The principles of the British Constitution do not admit of that slavery which Christianity condemns. The moment I assume the government of Upper Canada, under no modification, will I assent to a law that discriminates by dishonest policy between natives of Africa, America, or Europe. Both Simcoe and the Act Against Slavery were crucial to the formation of Upper Canada, yet arguably received little commemoration. The portrait of Simcoe was present and on display in Huron during the official opening on December 2, 1863. This is my third year at Western and also the first time I heard about the portrait and its important history. I think that the lack of remembrance for Simcoe and his legacy can be blamed on the lack of emphasis put on Canadian history in general and more specifically slavery within Canada. We tend to associate slavery more with the United States and in turn this makes anti-slavery movements receive less attention than that in America. In high school, only one history course is required, and to complete my major in history at Western, I also only have to take one course in Canadian history. Within that one course, Simcoe was discussed in his importance in establishing new court systems, but not in his connection to anti-slavery. With so much information being taught within eight months, the act of gradual emancipation tends to get overlooked. Overall, with schools, lakes, and towns being named after Simcoe, I would have thought that there would be more knowledge and commemoration around him and the act against slavery. While not receiving as much attention as he deserves, it is important to remember Simcoe and what his act meant for slavery within Canada and within the British Empire. The Act Against Slavery remained in effect until 1833 when the Slavery Abolition Act was passed by British Parliament and applied throughout the United Kingdom and Canada. Simcoe's dedication to ending slavery within Canada helped Canada on its path to play a major role in the anti-slavery movement.